Hi, my name is Mike with SideFX, and today we'll be going over the tube node. So let's drop down a geometry container and give ourselves a tube. Now right off the bat, you can see it creates a cylinder in the viewport, and that is, in essence, what the tube node does. It creates a tube based on the value of these parameters over here. So coming up to the top, we have the primitive type, and this allows you a certain measure of control over how your tube is being generated. You can see it defaults to primitive, but if we hit the menu, you can see we also have some additional options. We're going to get into more detail with some of these later, but for now we can just switch to polygon and generate our tube out of polygonal faces. Underneath that is the connectivity parameter, which, as you might have seen, only became active when I switched my primitive type to polygon. So you can see if we go back to primitive, it's grayed out. What the connectivity parameter is doing is just giving you an additional level of control over the generation of your tube. So you can see it defaults to quadrilaterals, but as you adjust this, you can see that you're also able to only generate the rows of your tube, or the columns, the rows in the columns, you can make it out of triangles, the default quads again, alternating triangles, and reverse triangles. So some nice options in there, but we can leave it at quads for now. Underneath that is the orientation parameter, which allows you to control which axis your tube is being generated on. You can see it defaults to Y, which means your tube will be up and down, but you can also generate along the X and the Z. Underneath that is the end caps parameter, which, if you turn it on, generates two end caps on both sides of your tube, closing off your geometry. Underneath that is the consolidate corner points option. So if we zoom in very close to our tube and actually turn on the point number visualization here, you can see that at each corner point of our tube up here, we only have a singular point, which is exactly what we want. But if we turn this off, you can see that the numbers begin to overlap. And that's because at each of these points, we now have three unique points that are perfectly overlapping. One at the top right corner of this face, one at the top left corner of this face, and one for this many-sided polygon up here, all perfectly overlapping at the same space. So by turning consolidate corner points on, it simply merges all of those points together into one singular point. Underneath that is the Add Vertex Normals option, and this one might seem a little bit confusing at first, because if we come over here and we turn on the Normals visualization, you can see that Houdini thinks that our geometry already has normals. But if we go and we middle mouse click on our tube properly, you can see that we don't actually have access to those normals in the form of an attribute. So right now, these normals are implicit, and we can't get at them. By turning this option on, nothing changes in the viewport, but if we go back and we middle mouse click on our tube again, you can now see that we have access to those normals as a vertex attribute. And so they are now explicit and can be modified by us. Underneath that is the center parameter, which allows you to control the center of your tube. So as we move this in the positive x, you can see that the tube moves accordingly. And so, in effect, this allows you to transform your tube around the viewport. Underneath that is the rotate parameter, which, as the name would imply, allows you to rotate your tube. You can see that the center of the rotation will always be the center of your tube, no matter where you translate it using the center parameter. Underneath that is the radius parameter, which allows you to control the top and bottom radius of your tube independently. So as we increase this, you can see that the top radius increases as well, and we get that same functionality for the bottom radius. So this allows you to dial in the look of your tube. Underneath that is the radius scale, which acts as a uniform scale on both the radii of your tube. So as we decrease this, you can see that both radii decrease uniformly. Underneath that is height, which allows you to control how long your tube is. So as we increase this, so too does the length of our tube. Underneath that is rows, which allows you to add some additional divisions to your tube. You can see that right here. So as we increase this number, we are getting more and more rows along the length of our tube. And the same functionality applies to columns, which allows you to control the number of divisions around your tube. And underneath that, there are two grayed out parameters, three really if you count imperfect, and these are only available if your primitive type is set to either NURBS or Bezier. So let's change this to Bezier right now. You can see that we get some strangeness with the end caps when switching to Bezier, but if we turn off the vertex normals, you can see that that fixes itself. Alternatively, you can just turn off the end caps altogether. So we come down here, and we now have access to the U order and the V order parameters, and these both allow you to control the vertex order of your tube. So if we turn on the point numbers, and maybe lower our rows and columns a bit so we can see what's going on, and we begin to play with these numbers, or these values rather, you can see that something is happening to the order of our points. And I believe that the V order needs additional columns before you can see anything. Yep, there we go. So these just give you an additional level of control over the generation of your tube when you're using either NURBS or Bezier. And underneath that is the imperfect parameter, 
This is on by default, and all it's doing is allowing your tube to be imperfect, so to speak. But if you turn it on, you can see you lose access to some of the parameters. But as a result, your tube is always guaranteed to have perfect curvature. So you can see if we turn this low enough, things start to get a little weird. But by simply turning on Im or turning off imperfect, you can see it fixes itself right up. This has been the Tube Sop. Thank you for watching.